Hey there, in this video I want to show you Scatter. It's a tool for procedural texturing in Blender and it's used to scatter textures over a surface. You can download it for free, the link is in the description. In this video I'm going to show you the basics, what it does, how it works. But I'm also going to follow this video up with a tutorial series where I walk you through the whole process of creating materials with Scatter. Alright. Here are some examples of what it can do. Okay, I'm here in Blender 2.8, but you can use Scatter with 2.79 as well. You won't be able to open the blend file though, you have to append Scatter with 2.79. If you want to use Scatter, the usual way is to append it here. You can just find it on the node tree, and you have to append the node group that says, well, append. This is also the main node of Scatter. So I'm going to focus on that one. I'm going to use all of them in my tutorial series though. This one is just a little bonus shape maker here. You can see what it does. It's a funny little thing. Alright, I'm going to walk you through the inputs. This input map here controls the overall input of the whole grid. You can see the grid here in the lower right corner. Each square is a cell where you can map your textures, and like I said, the vector input controls the whole grid. Next there's the count. You can see that it also goes into the negative values. These use the inverse distribution. Then the division, which is the overall scale of the grid. The individual size scales each individual cell. Then a random size here. A general rotation for every cell. And also a random rotation. You can also set a step size for the random rotation. As you can see, now there's always a difference of 45 degrees here. And then I random offset. You can also shift the phase of that random offset. That can give you a nice looking animation if you animate it. And then of course there's a random seed to give you different results. The random profile here gives you rudimentary control over the contrast of your random properties. The ratio here is for the image textures that you put in. But we can also squish and pull these masks here into rectangles. Because well, what we're looking at here are alpha masks. Should have mentioned that. For the alpha ID, we have to understand the ID system that Scatter is using. You can set it up in this group here. As you can see, there are 9 slots with image textures ready to be filled. If you want to use more than 9 textures, you have to boot up a second setup of Scatter. You can do that by appending Scatter a second time, and that'll give you a second setup with 0 .001 at the end. Just duplicating scatter will not accomplish the same thing, that's important. In here you can of course just use the image texture nodes here. Or you can also set up your own textures like procedural textures. All you have to do then is use this vector as the input for your texture. And then you can use all of these 9 color outputs as well as their corresponding alpha outputs. 
I'll just add in a shape maker and put that as the alpha number one. And then a simple noise texture as the color number one. Just take the same vector again and here we go. Now it's not yet using the shape maker as the alpha mask because it's set to zero. Putting in zero will just give you full opacity. If I set up the channel one now, you can see that our circles are getting used. Well, they're stretched, but they're still there. Let me just quickly adjust that ratio. Now to the outputs. We were looking at the alpha mask the whole time, but there's also the different color slots for our textures. Here we can see the noise texture that we set up earlier. Well, it takes a while sometimes. Okay, we don't see much, but that's because we have to combine it with the alpha channel still. It's intentional, by the way, that it looks so weird. If I would just put in a black background, it would give me seams later on. Yeah, it's pretty slow sometimes. It's really heavy on the node tree. Which actually brings me to my next point. You can also use single scatter, which will be a lot easier on your node tree and therefore much faster. But also your textures won't be able to overlap with themselves using single scatter. Let me show you that. But it's a lot less heavy on the node tree, it's a little faster. As you can see, if I increase the offset here, they just get cut off. Which will happen with the main node also eventually, but there's a lot more room. This pixelator here is just a tool that's used by Scatter. I'm going to show you what you can use it for in the motion graphics tutorial. Let's take a look at the other outputs. These here are obviously just the other color texture outputs. They are all going to use the same alpha mask for the alpha ID that you set up in your instance of Scatter. So if you have another texture in here with another alpha mask, you can just duplicate this node here and set up another alpha ID. But I'm not going to do that now. Okay, the other outputs here are different random outputs. These two here are correlated to the size and the rotation that Scatter gives you textures. That's pretty cool because you can shade your textures then depending on the size or the rotation. These four random outputs are just some uncorrelated random outputs. I mean, let's be honest, you can never have enough random outputs for procedural texturing. And that's basically it. As I said, I wanted to keep it simple in this video, just to give you a quick boost so you can dive right in. But I'm also following this one up with a tutorial series where I show you different approaches. And yeah, let me know what you think about it and there you go. Alright, I hope you found that useful and i see you in the next videos. I'm not going to be mad at you if you skip the first two tutorials because, let's be honest, a PBR material is much more exciting than a fruity wallpaper. So, yeah. I'm also planning on doing a closer look into the node group where I show you around how it all works, how it's set up. If you're interested in that, let me know and I can do it. So, yeah. Other than that, goodbye. See you around. That's horrible. <laughs>